Previews continue with the New York Metropolitans. It was just a couple of years ago, Pete, where the Mets were perennial losers. The last couple of years, the Mets staring down at the Phils. Will they be staring down at everybody else in the NL East? We'll find out more on the Mets from MLB.com. Mets beat writer Anthony DeComo. And he list, uh, joins us now on the Sports Bash with a preview of the New York Mets. Who uh, Very interesting team, I find, this Mets team. That pitching staff, Anthony, uh, it seems that everybody, two years ago when they're in the World Series, man, you thought you were contending with this pitching staff for years to come. Is that still the strength of this Mets team? It, we, we've talked about this Mets team for, for so many years now, and it's always been you know, the conversation begins with that young pitching and all that young pitching. and. Um, it's not so young anymore, and it's a veteran rotation now. It's a bunch of guys who have been there, done that, and the window is very much right now for these guys, and it all just really depends upon health. Um, you've got Matt Harvey, Jacob deGrom, Steven Matz, Zach Wheeler. That's four of the Mets' seven really big names that they have in that rotation or that could, could be in that rotation uh, who are coming off surgeries, who have not pitched since surgeries, and um, they've looked varying degrees of um, from pretty good to worried about their health this spring. So there's still a lot of uncertainty there. Um, but my point is that, yes, uh, pitching is still paramount for this team, and, and they have a much better lineup than they used to. But, you know, it's all about the health of that starting pitching because, you know, at the top end with Noah Syndergaard and Jacob deGrom and maybe even Matt Harvey will eventually get back to that you're talking about some of the best pitchers in the game. And the Mets can also run at seven deep with guys who helped them last year, whether it's Robert Gesellman or Seth Lugo. Um, but beyond that, they don't have a ton of depth. So they need those guys to be healthy. They need those guys to be pitching. And if that's the case, they can compete with anyone. Yeah, you know, when you think about the Mets, you think rotation. You think, of, as you mentioned, the young guys, the young starters. And now it's so funny how this game, young guys turn into not-so-young guys pretty quickly. Uh, but do they have the lineup now to kind of go with those young guys so so much is not on those young guys' shoulders? Yeah, they do. It's very similar, almost identical to the lineup that they had last year. And it's a very boomer bust lineup. There's a lot of veterans in there. There's a lot of power. Um, they're going to win a lot of games 11 to 2. They're also going to get shut out, you know, when the power is not showing up, as is the nature of it. Uh, the Mets scored more runs off home runs percentage wise than any team in the National League last year. And they'll probably do it again this year. Uh, it's, it's about hitting the ball over the fence for this team. Um, you look down the lineup from maybe with the exception of Jose Reyes at leadoff. Everyone else in that lineup has a chance to hit 20-plus homers, and you've got some guys in there in the middle, Joanna Cespedes, Jay Bruce, uh, even Neil Walker, uh, Lucas Duda certainly, guys who could hit 25-plus, 30-plus, uh, in Cespedes' case, 35-plus homers. So there's a lot of real legitimate power here. Um, the Mets are not going to steal bases. They're not going to run on you. They don't really have anyone who's a threat to hit for a really high average, uh, but they do have pop. And with the pitching that they have, uh, that's how they've built this thing. That's how they expect to win. Anthony, what would you say the biggest question mark is entering the season for the Mets? It's health. It's health. And honestly, any question you could ask me about an individual player uh, is going to revolve around that guy's health because, again, this is a very much a win-now team. Uh, and it's a team that has had major, major health issues in the past, and not just the rotation. Uh, you know, David Wright is already not going to be there opening day. He's dealing with a shoulder issue along with the litany of other health issues he's had. Um, Neil Walker is coming off surgery. Lucas Duda is coming off a pretty significant back injury that hurt him already this spring. Um, you know, Yoana Cespedes is one of the healthier guys here, and he's had some lower body, some leg issues last year. Uh, Travis Darno has never really been healthy. So just go on down the line. Pretty much everyone in the Mets lineup uh, has had either minor or major health issues in the past year or two. And uh, it's an issue because it's a veteran team, and, and that's good in that you have the experience. It's good in that you know what these guys are capable of doing. Um, but it's bad in that they're a little bit older and you do have to worry about it. You have to worry even about guys who have been healthy, like a Curtis Granderson, like an Isdrubal Cabrera who fought through some knee pain last year. Uh, it's going to be an issue all year long for the Mets. And, you know, they've built themselves to a spot where they have a very nice roster. They have a lot of depth. They have a good bench. They have a pretty good bullpen. Um, and obviously the rotation, they can sustain 
some losses. They can sustain one, two, maybe even three losses to key players. But if you have a year like you had last year for the Mets when pretty much everyone up and down the roster is dropping like flies, uh, it's a, uh, it will be a very difficult spot very quickly for the Mets if that happens. Anthony DeComo covers the Mets for MLB.com, and the Mets, uh, you know, six days away from opening day is uh, one of the favorites, right? I mean, that's the expectations, uh, an NL East crown or at least a playoff berth, right? Yeah, absolutely. And again, if you go on talent alone and, and you look at this Mets team, they're right there with uh, maybe not the Cubs, but certainly every other uh, team in the National League. Um, they are every bit as talented as the Washington Nationals. Um, they expect to win this division, and uh, I, I sound like a broken record, but it is about staying healthy. And it's about winning those games you know, that you should win. That includes, yes, games against the Phillies. That includes games against the Marlins, uh, certainly games against the Braves. Uh, you know, those teams all look better. Certainly the, uh, the Phillies and, and the uh, Braves look significantly improved from where they are where they were a year ago, and you could just kind of go in there and expect to beat up on those teams. So the Mets have to do that because they're expected to win. The Nationals are expected to win, and, and you do that by kind of holding your own against each other and against better teams in the National League and then just having a really good record against the teams that are finishing in fourth and fifth place. So uh, it's what the Mets need to do. They know it. And, again, talent-wise, this is one of the best teams in the National League. I think that's hard to argue. Yeah, the division is getting a little bit better, Anthony, and uh, I guess you wonder how many – what's the window on this Mets team? It was a one that came out of nowhere a couple of years ago, and it's amazing, as we know well in Philly, how quick that window all of a sudden seems to shrink. Yeah, I think they're saying the same thing in Washington, and certainly you can say it here in New York. Um, you don't know how long this window is going to be open, but when it opened – for the first time for this team in 2015, I think, you know, a lot of people thought the Mets were kind of ahead of schedule given the age of their pitching staff. Um, and yet we look at it now a couple of years later, and you don't know if this is going to be open for two, three, four more years, or, or if this might realistically be it. Um, you look at the way the lineup is constructed. You've got pending free agents in Neil Walker, uh, Curtis Granderson. As Dribble Cabrera's got an option, but he could be a free agent. Um, really, Ioannis Cespedes and David Wright, who you can't really depend on at this point. So Ioannis Cespedes is the one guy who you have locked up kind of long term. Um, you know, the starting pitchers are starting to get expensive through arbitration, and slowly they will start to become free agents. Uh, Lucas Duda will be a free agent. Just, again, just go down the line. So um, the Mets, as we know them this year, are basically the same exact team that they were last year, minus Bartolo Colon. Uh, and they expect to be healthier, and they expect to be better. But you cannot make that guarantee from this year to next. So uh, I think you're going to see a team that's all in this year. I, I would expect them to maybe be shopping pretty aggressively at the trade deadline if they have a need at that time. I think they'll be buyers. I think they're going to do essentially everything they can in their power to get back to the World Series, and they hope to win it. Because, like you said, uh, maybe this window, maybe they surprise us, maybe it's open for a while yet, but these things tend to last not as long as, as we think or hope they will. And you're looking right now with all these injuries that this Mets team might very well be proof of that. Uh, looking at the Mets, uh, finally here, Anthony DiComo, MLB.com. Anthony, uh, any warmth under the seat of uh, Mr. Collins? <laughs> not right now. Uh, you know, if the Mets get off to a – uh, five and ten start, I think it could, it could happen pretty quickly. But, you know, it's another guy who's in the last year of his contract, and he's talked about how long does he want to do this. He'll be 70 years old soon, and, and he's talked about not wanting to manage into his 70s. And, and this is a win-now team, so whenever you get that combination of things, um, it, it's something that would be on the radar with a slow start. But, um, you know, if the Mets get off to a slow start, given the talent that they have, you have to think that some other things have gone wrong. Um, you know, frankly, I give Terry Collins a lot of credit for how he kept the team together through some of those lean years, and, and they really have outperformed expectations for a lot of his tenure here. So uh, it would be a shame if he takes the blame for a poor start. But, you know, everyone's kind of on board with this Mets team right now. Um, everyone's kind of excited about what this team potentially can do. And, and frankly, I would be surprised if they don't get off to a pretty good start. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mets, uh, one of the favorites in the East. Anthony DeComo covers them from MLB.com. And, of course, the Phillies, uh, Mets, Braves, Marlins, and Nationals. We're taking a look at them all this week on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. Anthony, thanks so much. Okay, you got it.